And now, the winner of this year's award for academic achievement abroad is, dramatic pause, Kaya Henderson. I've had the pleasure to get to know Kaya over the last few months since she became a finalist for the award and would like to provide you with a brief glimpse into this year's outstanding student award winner. I'll begin by sharing a comment from Dr. Steve Wandiga, academic director of the Global Health and Human Rights Program for SIT Kenya. He writes that Kaya distinguished herself through her critical analysis of the abstracted data during the one-year time study period. Overall, her excellence in academics and as a team leader among her peers was outstanding. She excels in both individual and group settings, is highly receptive to feedback, and I know that she is continuously striving to be challenged and to grow. Personally, over the past three months, I've had the opportunity to work with Kaya as she prepared for today's Forum Awards presentation. I found her to be incredibly insightful, organized, and inspirational. Her dedication to her studies and her focus on her career development goals are truly incredible. She is very deeply committed to helping others. Originally from New Orleans, she is an Africana Studies major completing her pre-med coursework. In addition to being co-president of the Black Alliance for Pro-Health Students, sorry, Pre-Health Students, she also serves as a study abroad peer mentor at Pomona. She plans to get her MD and MBA, work in maternal fetal medicine, and eventually open her own practice focusing on holistic maternal health care for black and brown women. It is now my pleasure to introduce you all to Kaya Henderson to present on her project, a retrospective analysis of maternal mortality in Kisumu, Kenya from March 2021 to March 2022, the effects of proximal and distal factors on maternal outcomes. Kia, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Adam, for that wonderful introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Kaya Henderson. As Adam said, I am a senior at Pomona College, and today I will be presenting the research that I conducted in Kisumu, Kenya, called A Retrospective Analysis of Maternal Mortality in Kisumu, Kenya from March 2021 to March 2022, the effects of proximal and distal factors on maternal outcomes. I want to start by discussing why I chose SIT Kenya specifically, as well as why I chose maternal mortality for my research. As an Africana studies major and a pre-med student, I wanted to find a program that encompassed as many of my interests as possible. And I felt that this global health and human rights program was the perfect marriage of my two main interests. I chose maternal mortality for my research topic because it is one of the leading causes of death among women of reproductive age. And specifically within the United States, Black women are two to three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes than their white counterparts. And as a Black woman, this issue is extremely important to me, which is why I decided to focus on it for my research that I will discuss now. I had three main objectives for this research study, the first being to identify proximal and distal factors of maternal mortality. Proximal factors are defined as direct factors that affect health like HIV status and other underlying health conditions. Distal factors are indirect factors that affect health like marital status, religion, and occupation. The second objective is to determine the association of maternal morbidity and mortality. And the third is to determine external causes that lead to deaths of mothers from preventable and treatable conditions. I also had two additional objectives, which were to explore the patterns of antenatal and postnatal care visits and their relation to maternal mortality and morbidity, as well as to examine the relationship between women seeking services and those being identified as sick. I did not have one specific hypothesis, but I did come up with predictions based on my observations from the various site visits we had throughout the semester. My predictions were that lack of access to care would impact maternal outcomes, the availability of resources would impact maternal outcomes, and the county's cultural background would impact maternal outcomes. I wanna speak briefly about the county's cultural background. So Kisumu County is a patriarchal society that does not give women complete autonomy over their bodies and Consequently, women have less access to contraception, especially women whose husbands disagree with the use of birth control, and this can lead to more unplanned pregnancies, which can worsen maternal outcomes. 
Additionally, sex is an extremely taboo topic in the county, which does not allow for comprehensive sex education for children, teenagers, or even adults, which can also lead to worse maternal outcomes. I had three main sections for my methods, the first being an analysis of data. I looked at the Kisumu County data, as well as data at the Nyland the Health Center, which services the slum areas in Kisumu County. I also conducted a total of 42 patient interviews between Kisumu County Referral Hospital, which is the second largest hospital in Kisumu County, and NHC. Additionally, I conducted two staff interviews at each facility. And lastly, I looked at maternal death cases at KCRH. And here are just some videos and pictures from the two facilities. This video to the left is the maternity ward. The picture in the middle is the outside of the antenatal care facility. And the video to the right is the maternal child and health services area where I spent much of my time throughout the semester. And then this is the Nyalinda Health Center. The picture to your left is when you first walk into the maternity wing. The video in the middle is a view of the antenatal room. And then the picture to your right is the outside view of the maternity wing. Next, I will discuss my results. I had a multitude of results from this study, but today I'm just gonna focus on what I thought were the most important results from each section of my methods. So first, from the Kisumu County data, I found that postpartum hemorrhage caused the most number of deaths during this year. And this finding, as well as this entire chart, is very important because it allows for better prevention, treatment, and targeting since we were able to determine the main complications that we're seeing. From the NHC data, I found that proper gestation could be affected by the total number of antenatal care visits attended by the mother during the pregnancy. So if we look specifically at May 2021, we see that a total number of 67 patients attended appointments at the antenatal care clinic at this facility. However, only 16 of these patients actually completed the recommended number of four visits. And additionally, only five of these patients had their first visit at or before 12 weeks. So if we were to look more specifically at these individual cases, we'd likely see that the women who completed the four visits, as well as the women who had their first visit early on in their pregnancy, had less severe complications or complications that were treated and caught earlier because they were attending the proper number of appointments. Additionally, I just want to note that the dashes indicate data that I was unable to collect due to improper recording of records at the facility. Next, I'm gonna discuss the interview process more specifically before I actually get into the main finding from my interviews. So in 2015, the World Health Organization released a set of guidelines called Ending Preventable Maternal Mortality by 2030. And I use these guidelines to inform some of the questions that I was asking during the interview process to find out more specifically why Kisumu County is not on track to achieve the WHO's goal. In order to conduct these interviews, I had the assistance of community health volunteers who not only connected me to the participants, but also attended every interview with me and acted as translators if necessary. As I mentioned, I conducted a total of 21 interviews at each facility, and these interviews lasted approximately 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how detailed the participants were willing to answer the questions, as well as how fluent they were in English. I did have two main barriers that came up during the interview process, the first being language, which the community health volunteers assisted me with, and the second was skepticism regarding my intentions, which I will discuss in a few moments. The most important finding from the interview process was that the less support a woman reported having, the more likely she was to report having complications during the perinatal period. So during the interview process, I asked women if they had support, what kind of support they had and from whom. And I found that, for example, if a woman reported having absolutely no support and being responsible for everything in the household, which could include cooking, cleaning, grocery shopping, and caring for the other children, she was more likely to report the presence of complications during the perinatal period. And this finding is extremely important because it emphasizes the fact that Kisumu County is not implementing one of the EPMM strategies, which is women empowerment. And this is largely due to those cultural aspects that I discussed earlier earlier on. 
as I mentioned, there was some skepticism during my interview process. There was a wide variety of questions, but the main one was why. And I discussed with my program leader that it was extremely important to let my participants know why the research was being conducted as well as what it would be used for. Additionally, as a student from the United States, I wanted to make sure that the participants knew that my intentions were pure and that I had absolutely no intentions of selfishly invading their space. Additionally, I wanted them to know that the research was not being conducted solely for my benefit. And one of the ways in which I hoped to affect the community was by presenting my research. I was actually able to present my research to the health officials during the last week of the semester. And what I found from this presentation, as well as my staff interviews, was that these, women, these individuals are extremely well-versed with the information and they know all of the things that are going on with maternal mortality in their county. However, they do not have the financial means to implement some of these necessary changes in order to decrease the maternal mortality rate. For myself, I'm currently working on my senior thesis, which is another iteration of this particular study, focusing more specifically on maternal mortality within the United States. Lastly, I wanna discuss my main conclusions and recommendations. First, maternal mortality is an extremely important issue that needs to be solved not only in Kisumu County, but also worldwide. And specifically within Kisumu County, the county is not on track to achieve the EPMM, largely due to the fact that it has not implemented women empowerment or accessibility. I believe that the study in the future should be conducted on a larger sample size to allow for the data to be generalizable to the entire county. Additionally, the facility should work towards computerizing all of their health records, and the county should continue to work toward implementing the woman empowerment strategy. And two ways that they can do this is through comprehensive sex education for all ages, as well as through destigmatizing the use of contraception in the county. I would like to thank the SIT Kisumu staff, Dr. Steve Wandiga, Christine Odera, and Milton Amondi for all of their support throughout the semester. I would also like to thank the CHVs and the administrators who assisted during the interview process as well as the data analysis. Additionally, I would like to thank the Forum on Education Abroad Award for this recognition and for seeing the value in my research because it is extremely important to me. And lastly, I would like to thank Adam Rubin and Amelia Dietrich for all of their support throughout preparing for this presentation. Thank you all so much for your time and I'm now open to taking questions.